Whoa, there we are. Took a second to load in. Hey guys, v here with another V-Plays. And we're taking out the TA-152, which is fitting because we're actually paired up with an ME-209 Alpha. This is the other Tier 8 light fighter on the German side of the... Uh, of the tech trees and the ta-152 used to be the ultimate sniper platform it's got three mark 103 cannons high velocity long range 30 millimeter german guns and they can actually pump out uh, really great damage especially against say unwitting target at really long range we do have high altitude pretty decent maneuverability for an altitude fighter not stellar but decent enough and with these guns, if we can make contact with a target, like I said, can do some really nasty damage. You just saw there was essentially a two shot on that target, but it wasn't a guarantee that these rounds were gonna hit. Oh, a little bit of lag there on that first volley. Let's see if we can find a different target. There seems to be a heavy up high and a bomber. All right, let's go ahead and start climbing. We're gonna see if we can interrupt, see if we can interrupt their stuff. Maybe. There was a hit. I see you, light fighter. We got two good hits in, but it wasn't quite enough. We're going to get a bit of distance here. We do have some speed on our side. And I think we took out his engine on that initial run-in. We're going for the climb. Is he catching up to us? Ooh, those Spitfires, they are squirrely. But we definitely have altitude on him and our buddies on his six. Now that he's caused him to maneuver. Maybe. Not quite. Let's see if we can give him a hand here. Seems to be in trouble. Now the 209 Alpha actually has a single mark 103 in the nose come on man i took his tail out there it is Whew. that took way longer than i would have liked let's see if we can help out at the airfield we kind of got to get lucky with these guns they'll troll you i see the faka wolf Oh, we got lucky. Feels good when it hits, but it's not the same as when I'm flying around in, like, a Soviet derp plane. It just feels much more unpredictable in these guns' behavior. I've heard that they've nerfed the cannon's accuracy. And we do have Marksman 2 on this setup just to try and counteract some of these limitations. I mean, look at that. How close are we? And we can barely make any rounds make contact. All right, we got a couple of ground attackers over here. Let's see if we can help out with those just to keep this area clear. Right, we do have a bomber flight headed into the mine. Their bomber flight's heading towards our command center because we picked that up first. Good hit. There we go. A little bit luckier that last set of rounds didn't quite go where we wanted them to where are you at man you are barely even moving aren't you a little bit less lucky on that run those made contact though yes Okay, so this aircraft actually precedes what you would see for the 1A3 we just did the other day. The... Oh, there's the 109TL. Nice. So to kind of hit this, like, no man's land between the Fock Wolf 190... Delta at Tier 7. Then you get this aircraft, which is a bit of an awkward plane to begin with. And then you get into the TA... 183, which is a decent aircraft, but the Fog Wolf 252, not a lot of people really like. What do we got over here?
No good. No good. Try and keep some distance between me and him. What are you? Spitfire. Alright, I'll take you up. And now we'll come back. Like I said, we do have the altitude. Which is a nice change of pace from the Russian derp aircraft. We're heading into quite a few aircraft right now, so we're not to be wary of that fact. No good. Oh, come on. Get out of here. Good, we got an engine hit. Oh, and that's the power of the amount of damage we can do if we get lucky enough to make contact. We're actually gonna hammer over here. That is the Spitfire still. And yes, finally, these guns seem to be syncing up with my aim. We do have both mines and they are ticking over. Like I've said before, guys, mines are how you win games. You can hold a mine. We essentially have four sectors right now and the enemy kind of loses track of what the score is because this thing will tick over and it'll seem like you have the advantage until both these mines tick over at the same time now we had a bunch of good hits on the il-10 there uh, but they weren't causing nearly as much damage as what we saw with like the spitfire or the 109 tl but that also has to do with the damage resistance that you get from ground attackers Oh, a couple of good hits there. Not a stellar battle, but, you know, an adequate one considering the massive amount of... I don't know what you want to call it, the um, how finicky the guns are on this aircraft, but they perform fairly well we, towards the end at the very least, the way you'd kind of expect them to. But I always found with the TA-152, the closer I got, it almost felt like the guns were more inaccurate. And there's such a high shell velocity that... They don't require a ton of lead, but that also can kind of throw off your aim as well because you can't really trust the tracers because I found that the tracers, they, they show the tracers and you think that's where your bullets are actually going, but I have a feeling that that's just a visual depiction and not the actual representation of what's being received as a connection or damage data on the other side of the coin, so... We still have not been able to fully upgrade all this. We're still only at improved for all of our pieces of equipment here. So maybe if we improve the gyroscopic gun sight, we might have better luck. So uh, yeah, 11 aircraft kills, 4,500 damage. Uh, we took out an air defense aircraft, it looks like. Two air defense aircraft, and we managed to get 340 capture points. 140 while attacking and we aided in capturing two zones obviously the command center and the forward airstrip a lot of the rest of that was just defending over the mine so the ta-152 and i will talk to bravik in just a second but the aircraft does have these mark 103s and they are a very good shell velocity 140 damage a piece the rate of fire is very it's very methodical. You're talking about 60 rounds a minute, which means it's a round every second, right? So it's one, two, three, and that's what you were seeing when I was kind of holding down the trigger. I did opt to go with the, re the reinforced bull carrier because that'll allow me to get a few more shots out of the gun. And we have improved the rate of fire just a little bit there, but it's not a ton. We're able to pump out 428 cumulative damage, but again, we're hitting in big chunks with these 30s. And one's in the hub, and you got these two that are on the side. I don't know. I, I think it's it's a neat plane, and I always wanted to get it just to hold on to it. And it used to kind of be the, the meta. Everybody really liked flying this plane back before they really nerfed the accuracy. Uh, people complained about it because it was just killing people from astronomic distances. I mean... This aircraft can hit out to over 3,000 feet. And if you were to put on long barrels even further, I mean, that's just for optimal. You can hit all the way out to about 4,000 feet. So just imagine being that far away from somebody and, you know, your aircraft just splintering into a thousand pieces. So I do understand some of the uh, consternation on their part. But again, I wish they would have at least given it 
some more accuracy. It just feels like it's paling of comparison. And the ME209 Alpha, which sits next to it in the uh, in the tree here, the 209 Alpha still gets a Mark 103 hub gun, but gets an accompanying set of 20 millimeter cannons that are pumping out 95 damage a second each. That That's pretty decent damage for a set of 20s. So you're actually getting that big hard hitting main gun, but then you have these accompanying 20s to be able to get the rest of that damage out. And you're featuring a similar type of characteristics between these aircraft. In fact, if we were to go back to the tech tree and look at the TA-152, they're both using this Jumo 213 engine, which is why they have a similar shape to the front of the aircraft. So really, what what is the TA-152? It's more damage in a single volley, but not overall damage output when it comes to functional firepower. That's what you get when it, you, you're talking about this TA, the ME-209 Alpha. So I prefer the 209 Alpha as a functional aircraft, but the 152 I keep in my hangar just because of it being such an odd duck. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's battle and taking a look at an oldie, but not necessarily as good as it used to be aircraft in the form of the TA-152. And as always, guys, I'll catch you on the next one.